We love a good red carpet. And there have been plenty of them rolled out this week for the Tribeca Film Festival in New York. It's the brainchild of screen legend Robert De Niro, who set it up to help revitalise the area following the devastating events of 9-11. And while it may not have the glamour of Cannes or the indie cred of Sundance, Tribeca has led the way in encouraging the use of new technology to tell stories. In 2011, the festival included the video game L.A. Noir, and last year included a section dedicated to virtual reality. Unsurprisingly, the VR section is even bigger this year, and at the heart of it all is the world premiere of a British short made by BBC R&D. It's called The Turning Forest. Amelia and I loved it there. It was heaven for our eight-year-old selves. Playing like a child's fairy tale, its intention is to immerse you in its computer-generated world. But instead of lifelike visuals, the team behind it are using audio to pull you into that world. Specifically, sound that sounds like it comes from all around you, just like in real life. The next few minutes are best listened to through headphones, so go and get them now and get ready to put them on. If you saw Click's 360 show recently, you may have noticed that while you could look in any direction, the audio was just mono. The sounds, my voice for example, didn't come from the correct direction in space. And that's because it's incredibly hard to make 360 audio sound realistic. Well, I certainly Let's can hear something going on over there. And that's what the BBC R&D department have cracked. And hear the ripples of the water over there. And they're still over there when I turn around. Right, now's the time to plug in those headphones, because a couple of weeks before Tribeca, I got to see Turning Forest as the team rushed to get it finished. That's interesting, because there is a sound coming from over there that makes me want to look in that direction. Which answers one of the questions about virtual reality. How do you get the audience to look in the right direction at the right time? Of course, you draw their attention to a sound. That's what you do. So this was sound first, That's graphics right. afterwards. Yeah. This was created to demonstrate the sound first. Yeah, and its aim was to show how, how far 3D sound can, can go. We wanted to explore what you can do with natural recording, and so we really pushed the microphone techniques we were using as well to try and get a really a compelling sense of the forest space. After making the multi-directional recording of a real forest, Chris Pike and his team began to add moving 3D elements over the top. So every sound on the left-hand side has its own symbol in this, which is a top-down view of the scene. And this really is, we're watching where those sounds are coming from in 3D space right now. Exactly. Turning Forest was originally made for a static listener, where, yes, making sounds come from different speakers or different directions is nothing new. But for VR, the sounds need to come from just two speakers, a pair of headphones, and the sounds need to stay fixed in space as you turn your head. Yeah, OK, it's going behind me now. And if I turn my head... Ah, hello! And in order to check that everything's in the right place, the sound mixer has to wear these attractive motion tracks, Princess Leia-style cans. Go on, spin it all around me, spin it all around me, go on. That is actually really disorientating, you're right. <laughs> <laughs> when you've got your eyes closed as well, I think. Yeah. That is, that could make one feel quite queasy. Combine that with the VR visual. Oh, you'd be throwing yeah. up all over the place. Yeah. The roller coaster. <laughs> <laughs> but that's not the end of the story. Just because the producer knows the direction the sound needs to come from, doesn't mean that they can make it sound like it's there. For that, the R&D team needed to adapt a technique that's been around for more than a century. It's called binaural sound, and it is brilliant. Trust me, if you haven't put your headphones on yet, now is the time. OK, now you are listening 
in binaural sound, which is all about making you feel like you're really there. And it's so much more than just putting certain sounds into one ear and certain sounds into another. Right now, it should really feel like I'm walking closer to you around the left side of your head. It gets better because I can walk behind you and it really sounds like I'm there. And when it works best is when I come up right next to you and whisper sweet nothings into one ear while crinkling a crisp bag in the other. Oh yeah. All of the crinkly bag. Are you weirded out yet? Good, now you're sufficiently creeped out. You may be wondering how you record binaural sound. Well, the secret is in the sound recordist himself, whose name is... Ed. Ed has two microphones hidden inside his very human-looking ears on the sides of his very human-looking head. And that means that he captures sound in exactly the same way that your head does. If something happens off to one side, the sound will be quieter in the opposite ear and it will get there slightly later. It will also have been blocked by your skull, bounced around the room and ricocheted round the cartilage on the way in. Because he looks like a head, he hears like a head. He is Ed. But so far, binaural sound has only really worked if your head stays still while you're listening. In VR, however, you get to turn your head in all directions. And that's what Chris and the team have sussed. In their many-speakered sound room, they slowly rotated Ed while playing sounds coming from different directions and then researched how the sound changed in his ears. Now they could combine that intimate experience of binaural sound with the free head movement of VR to create something Chris calls dynamic binaural sound. One of the team's main missions is to devise a standard way of storing all the 3D audio information so that it can sound best on whatever sound system it's played on. So you can adapt to the system that the person is listening on. So if they're using headphones with a tracker or on a VR system, you can give a nice interactive experience. If they've got a 3D system in a big home theatre, then you can give a surround sound with height experience, but we also need to be able to replay on stereo and surround. This includes a standard for dynamic binaural sound in web browsers. To better serve the growing library of 360 video, we can now stream to our computers, phones and headsets. In fact, just this week, YouTube launched support for live streaming VR and support for basic dynamic binaural sound. Yeah. 